Welcome everybody to the uh, Safety Accelerators Insight Series. Uh, I'm Steve Price and today I've got with me Geza uh, Nikolainen, who's the uh, CEO of Rotaboost. Thanks very much for coming in. And our conversation is going to be, yeah, welcome. And our conversation is going to be around decarbonisation, which I guess is the world, industrial world's biggest uh, challenge we have at the moment. Um, before I ask Kesa to introduce herself, I'd just like to say a couple of words about the Safe Tech Accelerator itself. Um, we were established uh, in 2018 by Lloyd's Register, and we're the first technology accelerator really focused on the complexities of the critical uh, safety critical industries. Our mission is to streamline innovation and accelerate technology um, into, into the space. And we do this really to try and uh, unlock the productivity and mitigate risks and make uh, achievable, uh, sustainable and safety resilience. So that's why we're doing it. Um, but anyway, that's enough about us. I think going forward, what I'd like to do now is just ask Kesa to introduce herself and to maybe tell us a little bit about why they exist. Okay, okay so uh, thank you very much, Steve. So, um, yeah, myself, I, I've been in the chemical slash energy industry since 2007. Uh, I've worked internationally in several countries. Uh, in Europe, I'm originally from Finland, uh, but I've worked other countries as well as well as Middle East and Asia, and uh, I'm currently based in Shanghai uh, for the past four years. Um, I've started my own business since 2018, and I have been uh, doing mostly or been mostly in this environmental protection and uh, also emission reduction space for the past uh, multiple years. And uh, as a company, uh, we do uh, mostly for marine. We uh, we tackle the pre-combustion carbon removal challenge, so we remove carbon before it is combusted, as uh, well as produce low carbon hydrogen for land-based industries for downstream users like steel makers and uh, petrochemical users. And uh, the problem, main problem that we are there to solve, uh, is to reduce uh, carbon emissions uh, for hard to abate industries economically and scalably. So that has been a real challenge for most companies mm -hmm. and uh, we are on our way to get there. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's, uh, that's what we want to do. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. It's not, it's not a simple challenge, is it? <laughs> uh, no. Okay. So perhaps you could give us a bit of an idea of how the technology works. Sure. Uh, so our technology is based on thermocatalytic decomposition of natural gas. So essentially, we break methane and uh, any other hydrocarbon gases um, like ethane, propane, butane into hydrogen and solid carbon uh, with uh, thermal energy. So we use uh, mm -hmm. some for a ship, we would use some of the LNG stream uh, and catalyst, uh, catalyst, so at a lower temperature uh, to efficiently produce uh, less um, hydrogen with less CO2 emissions in the process. So this is much less polluting than traditional hydrogen produ production. Uh, so uh, more than four times less emissions compared to steam methane reforming, for example. And uh, we feed this hydrogen then to downstream engines, uh, boilers or fuel cells, and we store the solid carbon. So instead of producing CO2, we remove the CO2 before it is combusted. Okay. Uh, and so what's the advantage of creating solid carbon rather than CO2? What's the What's the main difference? So why why solid carbon? Uh, basically, um, solid carbon is uh, not taking uh, oxygen from the atmosphere, so we are we are not uh, storing oxygen on the voyage. So what is the difference? Uh, essentially, it's three point six times lighter than carbon dioxide. So you can imagine, uh, and also we are solid, mm. so we take far less space than uh, liquid carbon dioxide. And in addition, because it's a bulk material, we can store it in prismatic tanks. So therefore, space for carbon storage is not an issue, whereas it would be an issue for most ships with carbon dioxide. Yeah. So, so what would what would an installation look like on a ship? I mean, how 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 would this work? So. So how, how it would look like? So basically, uh, we take um, so the system is a modular modular box uh, around uh, 150 square meters to 250 square meters. We would store it either on the deck if it's a cargo ship, um, or if it's if, or in the machinery space if it's a container ship or a cruise ship or whatever. 
And uh, then also we have a possibility to have it in the backpack of the ship. So that's those, those are the basically three locations where we would have it. And uh, that's where we have the hydrogen reactor. So we basically feed uh, LNG into these systems around 8 to 15 bar pressure and uh, then deliver the formed uh, reacted hydrogen into um, at slightly lower pressure to the end users. And uh, we do not use a lot of electricity. As mentioned, uh, most of our energy is from the heat. Uh, and uh, with our efficient catalysts, we don't need that much of it either. So uh, our, we are able to achieve this emission reduction, which is the whole point. And uh, the, the good thing, for especially for LNG carriers, is that there is, uh, for older ones especially, there is a lot of excess BOG, so boil of gas. So we are also able to take that and uh, then utilize that fully through our system and then blend in the hydrogen to the end users, especially for older vessels which have uh, boiler systems, uh, because those are able to take slightly higher percentages of uh, hydrogen already now compared to engines. So that's a immediate prospect, basically, in that marine mm -hmm. industry. And... Uh, so what we do uh, with that is uh, we are actually able to then uh, address both the CO2, carbon dioxide, and methane slip. So uh, we are, we are uh, doing this simultaneously with the same equipment. How does this happen? Basically, uh, because we are producing hydrogen, uh, hydrogen is blended then to the end user, and the end user emissions are reduced. So the methane slip, uh, emissions, because we are replacing uh, part of their fuel uh, with hydrogen or the methane fuel with hydrogen. Therefore, uh, the replacement helps. And uh, in addition, also uh, for four-stroke engines especially, this replacement uh, helps to also burn the remaining methane much more efficiently. So that's, so uh, that's that, a real yeah. benefit. Yeah, so we're saying ahead, basically we're blending the hydrogen in, into the into the fuel yes. mixture, basically, then we can Correct. we can almost get rid of the methane slip out of the normal gas of an engine because Correct. it's burning more efficiently and it's burning all of the methane. Okay, so, that, so, so uh, some engine bit, yeah. makers me mentioned sorry, yeah, so most yeah, no. engine makers mentioned like above fifty percent blend means that you basically don't have methane emissions, which is a no. great thing. Okay, and at the same so, time, uh, with above fifty percent, you're lowering your emissions at least thirty percent. So. Right. Okay. So, so we can see on a ship then that that um, we, we, we're taking off uh, the gas from maybe boil off gas or whatever it is. So you're creating the hydrogen, and then the hydrogen has been then used to basically improve the uh, the methane efficiency of the fuel. So actually, correct. We're actually having a direct impact on on the methane emissions at the same time as creating the, the solid carbon and the. Uh, and I guess you could correct. use the hydrogen for other things as well. I mean, if you have. Uh, yeah, the, the hydrogen you use downstream, basically, because that's that's yeah. the energy. Uh, so that's yeah. the energy that you need to use instead of the methane. So that's yeah. uh, that's for the downstream engine or boiler or fuel cell. In some cases, we are yeah. looking at even fuel cell um, fuel yeah. cell usage. But um, yeah, that the, it has variable uses for different ones, and uh, you can use similar uh, fuel supply systems as with traditional LNG. And also, we have got marine um, AIPs from LR. ABS, uh, RENA, and uh, uh, BV for this system, uh, mm. based on IGF code as well. So it's uh, it's very much seen as a safe alternative because we don't store hydrogen, we burn it immediately. Yeah. Okay. So okay. yeah. So so what's the what's the if I'm a ship owner or operator, what what, what why, why why would I want to jump into this? What's this? What's what's in it for me? So. I guess the cost of abatement is the biggest issue <laughs> for a ship yeah. owner, I would say. So the equivalent CO2 abatement cost for us is uh, significantly lower than for traditional carbon capture. Uh, so yeah. that's uh, in the hundred, 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 or over hundred dollars cheaper than for carbon capture. So okay. I would say per ton of CO2. So that is a significant saving over the lifetime of the vessel. And uh, in addition to that, uh, traditional CO2 capture cannot take care of methane slip reduction at the same time. Mm. So you would need another piece of equipment for that. So you would need to have two equipment and two yeah. capex and also two sets of electrical uh, usage because both would take extra electricity. Yeah. 
So uh, we don't have that issue and our cost is, uh, or even CapEx is uh, lower than for traditional CCUS because we don't have these compressors or large electrical users or C tanks. So okay. that's another benefit there too. So what happens to the carbon you've created? So the carbon is uh, graphite and uh, we uh, have studied it and uh, used it with some of our collaborators uh, for battery conductive agent, for example. It's an excellent mm -hmm. material for that. So it performs really well. And uh, also we are uh, using it for tires. So it's not carbon black, but it can replace carbon black uh, because it's a microcrystalline graphite. So that's also one uh, one massive potential usage when we start to produce more since uh, you cannot always go to battery grade because that's uh, that's still it's a massive market but it still has its limit but whereas for tires 30% uh, of the tire weight is carbon so that's a massive user end user for that oh, wow. and uh, also for plastics uh, for um, biochar and uh, for steel making industry. So those are the big, big users for this. And for all of those applications, our carbon is suitable. So how, what, how, do you see, how do you see this getting to the stage where actually industrial users are using your carbon? What, what challenges have we got in that space? So, so I guess it is um, more about the, the geographical uh, challenges. So yeah. most of the carbon uh, still globally is produced in China. And uh, we would be producing most of our carbon outside of China. So uh, creating the supply chain outside of China is uh, definitely a challenge. But luckily for us, uh, China banned the export of battery grade graphite um, last year. <laughs> so there is a huge shortage other, in other locations. So the industry is ramping up there. So uh, we have a lot of interest for the carbon production, more so than our hydrogen production, which is uh, oh, very okay. interesting for us um, at this stage. So that's uh, that's a yeah. very growing market. Go ahead. So as a new owner operator, we could end up with a scenario where you know actually eliminating methane slip and capturing carbon on board actually becomes a profitable business, where because actually there's a value for, for what they're what we're creating, a significant value potentially. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So especially in the case where we have uh, BOG, which is free. So so yeah. if if the BOG is excess BOG, then uh, yeah. our abatement cost is negative. So, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, so that's there, great. There so a, especially using the energy to, yeah, very, that sounds amazing. Right. Um, so it certainly sounds like there's an opportunity for, for the LNG uh, world to, uh, to get on board with this sort of technology. And uh, so I'm assuming that then what the infrastructure you're talking about is the ability to offload the carbon, of, you know, when you come to port and, and things like that, and the ability to then Correct. get it to where you need to be. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the infrastructure there is uh, already existing. So uh, basically it's traditional bulk uh, methods. Uh, so for example, for LNG carriers, um, because uh, it's uh, not allowed to do CMOPs in uh, terminal anyhow. So yeah. when they offload their normal trash or on unload yeah. uh, food supplies and this, they use a PSV. This kind of yeah. PSVs also usually have bulk uh, capacity so they can take yeah. bulk carbon out as well. So the vessel is existing, uh, but we just need to refit hoses and compressors. So mm -hmm. that's the uh, beauty of it. So uh, you can do it simultaneously with other offloading and loading for even yeah. LNG carriers. And whereas for cruise ships and other ships that go to a port, then of course you are able to do it with a park, uh, port mm -hmm. uh, stationary unloading devices. Yeah. So that takes maybe 30 minutes to uh, three hours, depending on the volume of yeah. the carbon. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, that's a, that's really interesting. Yeah. So, um, so uh, perhaps um, I mean that, that's great to hear about that. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about what's going on outside of the shipping industry and you know and uh, with with this technology. I mean, because you obviously talked about certainly so. Yeah. Yeah. So we are working uh, actually with uh, quite many oil companies at this moment. So. Uh, publicly with Petronas, uh, so we are we are delivering uh, uh, one of we have several pilots running already in China, but uh, we are also delivering for Petronas a commercial pilot and uh, for other others as well. And uh, basically, they are using it for traditional oil and gas. Uh, but mm. why they want to use our system is uh, a uh, we have lower emissions, much lower emissions than the other alternatives, and b 
uh, we are able to produce hydrogen affordably. So those are the two reasons why others are using us. So therefore, also other industries like steelmaking, which are transitioning to mm. more greener technologies, are also interested in our technology for the hydrogen production first, and then also for the carbon, because for each ton of steel, you use around 12 kilograms of carbon. Mm. So that's uh, another attractive uh, and interesting, interesting industry for us. But these industries, they are lagging behind the marine industry in a sense of legislation. So marine industry, luckily for us, they have a clear legislation in place and a timeline in place. And uh, for us, um, also, there are volumes there uh, that can be addressed, like all of the LNG fuel ships. Uh, and uh, we are very much interested in that space for us. And uh, also the system size is fairly controllable and we are able to make the system very modular. Whereas for land-based installations, those are like massive yeah. uh, standalone installations. So yeah. uh, in our development stage, we are able to address the marine industry more readily now. Well, that, that's great to hear that. And so, I mean, I mean, that, that's brilliant. And, uh, you know, and we wish you luck with that. I mean, uh, I Thank know you we, so much. we have a lot of interest from uh, certainly partners of our methane abatement program. Um, so uh, perhaps you could uh, tell us a little bit how, how you've worked with the Safe Tech Accelerator. So about Safety Tech Accelerator, it has actually been really, really great. So um, it's, I think, the only fact-based platform um, that has like efficiently opened the eyes for industrial decision makers regarding these issues, methane slip especially. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's extremely well project managed um, and uh, all of the projects have clear milestones. Um, that's rare in any industry now, even, even delivery industry from the customer point of view or any other place. And uh, what's good about it is that actually it requires proof uh, that it works. You have to make a convincing study. The customer needs to buy in as well. And you need to have these weekly sessions to check on the progress and see that everything is going well. And uh, for any new technology, the entry barrier is both uh, technical and uh, commercial and uh, in the validation of this. And uh, for third parties that are in usually looking at new technologies, they are in passive role, not trying to promote it or not trying to actually move things along. But I, I think uh, Safety Tech Accelerator and MAMI especially are actively scouting for both technologies and suitable customers who are willing to move things along. And uh, uh, so it's a uh, much less uh, passive. And uh, we actually hope that this is not only like an accelerator, but an idea amplifier and uh, also able to reach out regulatory bodies and policymakers how this kind of technologies can transform the negative connotations around natural gas and uh, methane emissions and how actually there is a positive change happening in the industry to mitigate these problems. Yes, yeah, thanks. So, um, in fact, uh, Rotoboost is one of our technology companies within the Methane Abatement in Maritime Innovation Initiative, which is one of our uh, large safety tech growers, large collaborative programs. And we have 20 uh, shipping companies and oil majors involved in it. And um, yeah, and together we're basically trying to remove methane emissions from from LNG fuel use. And uh, we're, that does involve a lot of work around technology companies like Rotoboost, but also around, um, you know, the uh, EU and IMO and the standards and trying to in particular get a, you know, a standard for testing and measuring this stuff because at the moment we're a bit short on regulation in that space. And, and also making sure that the regulation, in fact, actually encourages development like Rotobus because we want to encourage this as quick as possible, as much as possible for the industry, because at the end of the yeah. day, we are trying to decarbonize. Okay, so I think yeah. this is probably um, the end of our, our chat. It's been great to talk to you. I know you're exceptionally busy. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, as we can see, no, thank you, Steve. Amazing tech company. And uh, so it's been great to talk to you. Um, for those of you out there, um, this is a um, one of a series of insight interviews we do. Feel free to visit the Safe Tech Accelerator or website and uh, have a look at what we're doing. Um, emerging technology shows basically amazing promise um, uh, for, for a lot of our corporates, you know, whether you're a ship owner or operator. But actually trying to choose where to invest is really quite difficult. And that's where partnering with someone like the Safe Tech Accelerator can really help. But anyway, thanks very much, Asa. Really good thank to you have you so with much. Us. And thank you again. Thank you. Bye, thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. bye.